This video is for National 5 Design and Manufacture. And we're going to look at surface finishes. We're going to look at the different types of finish that we can put on a surface. And along the way, we'll look at some techniques for getting a really good finish on a surface. But what do I mean by a surface finish? Well, it's the, the coating or the treatment that you put on a surface to make it appear awesome. Or it can also be a coating or treatment you put on a surface to protect it perhaps from the weather, or to make it a little bit more durable. In total, there are eight surface finishing techniques, and at National 5 Design and Manufacture, you're expected to know which each involves. Some are for wood, some are for plastic, and some are for metal. And quite often, the ones which are suitable for metal are also suitable for plastic as well. Those techniques are sanding, polishing, varnishing, oiling, staining, waxing, painting or lacquering, and dip coating. Let's take a look at them. Sanding is first. So, sanding, well, sandpaper is available in different grades. You get coarse, rough sandpaper, and you get fine sandpaper. And the numbers on the back of the sandpaper tell you what grade it is. The coarse stuff is low numbered, 40, 60, 80, something like that right up to the fine grit, which is 400 and above, let's say. So the number on the back of sandpaper indicates its smoothness. The higher the number, the smoother the sandpaper. The technique for sanding wood is to begin with the coarse stuff. So you start off with a low number and you work towards a high number of paper. We always sand in the direction of the wood grain and right at the very end of the sanding process, we can use a little bit of water to raise the grain during fine sanding which improves it even, even further. This is a proper technique to do, and if you follow that technique of going along the grain and working your way up through the numbers, then you can sand a piece of wood to something akin to like shiny plastic. It really is quite easy to do. On plastic and metal edges, the technique and the tools are a little bit different. We tend to use files and something called wet and dry paper or emery paper. And it's a four-step process. First of all, you would cross-file the edges, passing the hand file across the edge of the material. You would then draw-file it by drawing the file along the edges of the material. You'd then rub with emery paper, or wet and dry paper, as it's sometimes called. And a final fourth step is to polish the edge with something like Brasso. The surface finishes for wood of which there are four of them, handily spell the acronym VOWS, Varnish, Oil, Wax and Stain. Let's take each of them in turn. Varnish gets applied several coats with a brush. It tends to come in a tin, it tends to be quite liquidy and it's very hard wearing and it's very waterproof as well. You can use it inside and outside. You would apply varnish to a piece of wood if you wanted to toughen it up or if you wanted to make it waterproof. Oil, unlike varnish, is actually really quite quick and easy to apply. And what oil does is oil allows the grain to come through. You can see the grain of wood through a piece of wood. So oil not only protects the wood, but can also make it more attractive as well. It tends to be used uh, inside, uh, and it's an interior coating. Although Danish oil, which is a mixture of oil and varnish, can be used outside as well. But oil tends to need to be, you need to re-coat and re-oil something every year or every few months or so. Wax comes in a tin and it just looks like candle wax. It's, you apply it with a cloth and you buff it to a polish and it leaves behind a really silky smooth finish. It offers very little protection, very little durability increase. It's basically a treatment to make it a slightly more durable also a bit more attractive. And finally, stain. Stain is what people will paint their sheds and fences with. You can get stains in all sorts of colours. You apply it with a brush and it can protect the wood against the rain and against the rot and you can use it inside and outside. So if you've got wood that you'd really make, like to make coloured but you'd also like to be able to see the wood grain through it, then you would stain that wood. There are other surface finishes too, and we can put these on wood, metal or plastic. The first one would be paint, 
or a lacquer. And we've all painted something before, I'm sure. You apply brush, you apply paint with a brush or a spray, and it's colourful. But unlike stain, paint totally obscures the wood grain if you apply it to wood. And it offers strong protection. You can get some really quite tough paints out there. And also I'd like to talk about dip coating as well. Dip coating is when the product is submerged in usually molten plastic, although you can get dip coating in tins as well. So you literally dip the product into the melted plastic and as you pull it out, the plastic cools and hardens and grips on to the underlying object. So you can see the little photograph of the um, pliers there. Those red rubbery grips have been dip coated. Uh, it can be really colourful. Uh, it totally hides the underlying material, but it does give it a strong protection. And as I say, it makes for a really comfortable rubbery grip as well. The last thing I want to talk about is the technique for how you apply paint to a surface. Um, you don't just slap it on and hope for the best. There is a process here. There's a, a tried and tested way of getting a really good paint finish. And it's as follows. We're talking about wood here. We would sand the surface to remove all the blemishes, all the grubby marks, all the pencil lines, etc. We would then remove the dust that was left behind by that sanding process, either by hoovering it up or brushing it away, because we don't want the dust to mix in with the paint. Then on top of bare woods, we would apply a primer or an undercoat, and it really binds itself to the wood underneath. And then you would apply your chosen paint in layers, which we call coats. Coats of paint is layers of paint. And you would allow each coat to dry thoroughly before applying the next coat. Some people will also advocate for rubbing each coat down with a very fine grit of sandpaper before going on to apply a coat on top of that. So in this lesson, we've looked at the eight surface finishing techniques. Uh, we've looked at how you can paint something, how you can fi file and polish the edges of plastic and metal, and how sanding works. And I've introduced you to the concepts of dip coating as well.